Today I'm going to be demonstrating this barn owl that I have painted in oil over acrylic paint. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind Law Creek Fine Art. I painted this on a round Frederick's canvas. This canvas is a little bit rougher than I typically like for fine detail, so I added two layers of gesso, letting it dry in between each layer, and then sanded it down to a really smooth finish. I did my underpainting with Liquitex Basics, and you can finish the whole thing with acrylics if you don't want to work in oils. I just use oils because it saves time. And then I put two layers of oil on top when that dried. If you're supporters over on Patreon, I have the one hour version of this tutorial available for you now, complete with voiceover. Now, on to this tutorial. For this technique, I am working flat because I'm going to make a mess with water being sprayed all over. I'm applying my acrylic paint all over the place and spraying it off with a spray bottle. I'm creating all of these weird textures and lines with that spray bottle and then I'm moving that paint around because it's very wet, moving that around with a hair dryer. I want to get that nice and dry before I do my additional layers. So adding more wet paint now on top and spraying it a lot with the spray bottle and then drying that out again. Now at this point I thought it would be a great idea to make swirls in the background with a template and an airbrush. Turns out that idea looked way better in my head than it did on the canvas. So I went ahead and painted right over it again with more of the texture that I was previously doing by putting the, white, the paint on and then spraying the water with the water bottle all over it taking the hair dryer to move that around and dry it off. You can continuously build like this until you get the look exactly how you want it to. I'm using magenta, titanium white, black, and a little bit of dioxazine purple for that. I had my owl previously drawn out on another piece of paper. I then used transfer paper to transfer the drawing onto the canvas cleanly. That way I don't have erasing, eraser lines all over the place or anything like that. My main focus at this point is to make sure that all of my brush marks are going in the right direction to match up with those feathers. I've got to pay close attention to my reference photo. This reference photo comes from Paul Sherman over at Paint My Photo. I'm using a liner brush for some of the smaller details there. Now my colors are a little bit more bold than the reference photo was because I needed to make sure that this owl felt like he was a part of the background. If I used the same colors, the very muted colors that were in that photo, it would not have worked with this background. He would have looked like he was cut out and stuck on top of a totally different scene. So to make him work with this background that I painted, I've got to change the colors to go with that. I've got to pull a lot of the magentas in there and I have to darken him up quite a bit. I'm using a filbert brush to block in most of this. Again, just constantly looking at my reference photo, copying what I see there. I know that seems overly simplified, but it really is that simple. I am just copying what I see. Now for these little speckles, I'm using a liner brush and just dabbing in the black on top of the gray. They do not need to be exact, they just need to be close. I need to make sure there's variation in there. I don't want it to just look like a bunch of polka dots. I'm using that liner brush to add a little bit more detail around the owl. Now I'm coming back through with the white, the bigger white specks. After I get those bigger ones in, I've got to come back through with the teeny tiny white specks. And that really goes very, very fast. It may seem like that would take a long time to do, but it doesn't because you don't need to be perfect. Adding a few more of these little details in there, and the same on the specks on the back of the head. Just make, need to make sure they're in about the right place, that they're about the right size. They do not have to be exact. Adding some highlights on top of that reddish brown with the unbleached titanium white. That way that reddish brown doesn't just look flat. Now I'm working in oils. I'm doing a thin, thin glaze of magenta over that background. 
And you can do the same with oil, with acrylics. If you use a glazing medium with your magenta, it will look exactly the same and it'll make the richness of that color look the same. Taking some of that magenta and going around the, the owl as well to again, make him feel like he's a part of that background. And now I'm just using that the oil paint to do little teeny touch-ups. Most of my detail work was already done with the acrylic, so I really don't need to put much work in with the oils. The oils are just allowing me to very easily, very quickly soften everything up. Just because they dry so slow, it makes blending very easy. And that is it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Again, if you are supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you now, complete with voiceover. If you are new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, art Q&A, and sometimes social media tips for artists every Thursday, and artist vlogs every weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Google+, Plus. all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. So everyone keeps saying that this guy looks like Labyrinth. I've never seen that movie. And I was a kid in the 80s. I should have seen that, right? I just aged myself. The best thing about this shirt is it looks and feels just like pajamas, but it's not, so I can wear it in public. I should put on some sweats and go shop at Walmart.